Welcome to the Third Wave Business Systems Credit Card Processing Application Instructional Video Series. My name is Dennis Tucker. I'm the Development Manager here at Third Wave. And in this first session, we will be covering the installation of all of the application's components, the process of licensing the application, the process of allocating licenses to SAP Business One users, and the configuration of the SAP Business One add-on client to meet your business process needs. Third Wave's credit card processing fills the void in SAP Business One by allowing the user to authorize funds against a customer's credit card, directly charge a customer's card, or capture previously authorized funds and apply those funds to incoming payments in SAP Business One for the marketing documents. It extends your ability to take in funds from your customers, giving them flexibility to meet their needs and yours. So let's get started. When you download and unzip the installation package, you'll notice that there are a number of different folders. We're going to start the installation process in the database server folder, and we're going to run the setup executable for the database server portion of the credit card application. We'll click next on the first installer screen, Enter the name of the server that the database server is going to be installed on, which should be the server in which SAP resides. And we're going to select the type of authentication, in this case SQL. Once I select the SQL server authentication type, I'll be able to enter an administrative level user and password combination for your SQL server installation. Once you've entered the SQL user credentials, you can click the next button to continue with the installation process. When you've completed the installation, you'll see a checkbox on the last screen that says Launch TWBS Credit Card Processing DB Server. You can select this, and if you do, when you click the Finish button, the database server window will be automatically launched. If this is a brand new installation of the application and the server settings have not been completed, when you launch the database server, the server settings window will come up automatically. On the Server Properties screen, the type of SQL Server being used should be specified, the name of the server should be entered, the name of the SAP company database against which the credit card application is being installed should be specified, an administrative level SAP user and password credential should be entered, an administrative level SQL user and password credential should be entered, a B1 license server can be specified, the circles in the key encryption key field indicate that the field has a value even though it's not displayed to the user. In this case, it would be the default installed value of the key encryption key. If you ever need to change the server that the database server aspect of the credit card application is installed on, it's critical that that be done in a particular manner to maintain the data integrity of your key encryption key. Please contact Third Wave Support for additional information. We can click the Test Connection button to test our SAP connection, and if it's successful, we'll be prompted with a box once the test is complete. Click the OK button and click the OK button on the Server property screen to return to the main database server window. During the application install process, a Windows service is installed on the server. If you ever need to uninstall the application to remove it or to upgrade it, the first step that you should take is to click the Uninstall DB Service link here on the database server window. Once it indicates that the server is no longer installed, then you can proceed with uninstalling the application. If you ever need to reinstall the DB service after uninstalling it, you can do so by simply clicking on the Install DB Service link here on the database server window. The next step in installing the credit card application is to obtain a license key, which you can do by going to our support portal at support.twbs.com. You can log into the support portal with your credentials, click the My Customers menu option at the far left of the menu bar. This will provide you with a list of third wave products purchased by the customer. Identify the credit card processing line and click the Generate License Keys link on the far right side. This will load the License Key Generation screen which will normally be pre-populated with a lot of your information for you. You will need to enter things like your server name and the build number of the application, which is usually the second number in the license key version number. Once you've completed the information, click the Generate License button. 
Your new license key will be displayed on the screen and will also be emailed to you separately. We can simply highlight the license key here and click copy. Then we'll go back to our database server window, click the add edit license key link, paste the value into the field on the screen and click the OK button. You've successfully licensed your credit card processing application. The next step in the credit card installation process is to install the database objects. These are user-defined fields and user-defined tables that the application will utilize for data storage. Creation of the database objects is usually done with all users logged out of the SAP Business One system. This is a two-step process, the first of which is to click the Add, Update, Tables, and Fields link in the database server. Once the object creation process is complete, the indicator light to the left of the link will turn green. The second step is to click the PCI Compliance Upgrades link. Not only will this install additional fields, it will remove any card security code information in the event that you're upgrading from a previous version that was non-PCI compliant. The third wave credit card processing application does not have an import utility for importing business partner credit card data. However, if you do have data from a pre-existing credit card system and you've moved the data into our tables using a utility like the Data Transfer Workbench with an unencrypted credit card number in the appropriate credit card number field, you can encrypt that data simply by clicking on the Encrypt BP Credit Cards link here in the database server. Once that's complete, in order to create the masked credit card value which will be displayed to users in the system, you would then also need to click the mask credit card numbers link on the database server. Once this process is complete, this icon would also turn green. The purge transaction data link in the database server is a utility that helps people to maintain their PCI compliance by giving them a function to remove transaction data in their company database. Clicking on the purge transaction data link will bring up a screen that will allow you to define the date before which you would like all transaction data to be removed from the database. Specifying the date and clicking the purge button will bring up a prompt asking the user to confirm that they wish to remove the data. Now we're going to move on to the installation of the SAP Business One client. In order to do that, we'll need to access the Add-on Administration menu under Administration, Add-ons, Add-on Administration. Click the Register Add-on button, and we're going to browse out to our Installation Package folders in the client and select the ARD file. Select the Install as Part of Registration checkbox and click the OK button. The credit card SAP client installation process will be initiated. You can click next to the prompts on the installer screens. The files will be copied and the SAP client portion of the application will be installed. Then we can go up to the default group in the add-on administration program and set it however we'd like. In this case, I'll set it to automatic. I can also set it by user to use the default from the main screen and I'm going to click update on the add-on administration. I'm going to go into the add-on manager and launch credit card processing by selecting it and clicking the start button. Now as part of this process you'll notice that on the status bar we have a message and credit card processing cannot start at this point in time. The reason for that is that the ISO currency codes have not been defined for the currencies in the SAP system. In order to correct that oversight we'll go to the administration, setup, financials, currencies option. The currency setup screen, if you scroll to the right, has a column in it for the ISO currency code. We simply need to select the appropriate values for the currencies in our SAP database and fill in the ISO codes for them. Once that's complete, we can click the update button and we're all set to go back to the add-on manager and start up our credit card application. And as you can see, the credit card application now successfully starts and is connected. The last step in the installation process is to place store procedure logic within one of the store procedures in the SAP company database. You can obtain this logic by going into the stored procedure logic folder, 
and opening the text file within using Notepad. Use Control A to select the contents of the file and Control C to copy it. Then we're going to go into SQL into the stored procedures of your SAP company database. Scroll down and right click on the SP Post Transaction Notice Stored Procedure. Use the Modify option. Underneath the Add Your Code here, place your cursor and paste the stored procedure text. Execute the stored procedure to apply the changes and you've completed your installation process. Recent versions of the credit card processing application will require that you allocate the licenses to your users in SAP. By accessing the license allocation screen through the administration, setup, banking, TWBS credit card, CC license allocation menu option, you can see the users in your SAP Business One Company database that have been allocated credit card licenses. When you're starting the credit card processing SAP client, if licenses have not been allocated, either because you're a brand new installation or upgrading to a version that now includes credit card license allocation, the SAP client will disconnect and the credit card license allocation screen will appear so that you can appropriately distribute your licenses to the SAP users who need them. To configure the application, we'll return to the SAP Business One client, click on the administration menu, setup, banking, TWBS credit card setup, and credit card configuration. The first configuration section of the general tab lists the marketing documents that can be enabled for credit card authorizations. These include the sales order, delivery, AR down payment invoice, and AR invoice. At least one of these four levels must be enabled for the credit card application to work. You'll notice that the credit memos are not listed. That level is always enabled and cannot be deactivated. The next credit card configuration is the authorization markup type. This is either a flat amount or a percentage that can be added to an authorization to account for charges that will be added to the order down the line without having to void and reauthorize the amount again. These can be handling charges, freight charges, or any other charges that you would add to the order later on. This is set at the company level either as a flat amount or a percentage. So for example, if I set a $10 flat markup amount, if I authorized a $100 order, I would actually be authorizing $110. Checking the allow editing of markup type at authorization box allows the user on our authorization window to change the amount or percent at the time of the authorization. Please note that if the authorization amount is greater than the final invoice total, the amount that will be settled will be the lower of the two. So for example, if I had authorized that $110 on the order and only added $8 of freight for a total of $108, when the funds are settled with the provider, we would only have captured $108 and released the other $2 back to the customer. If your credit card processor supports address validation services, you can enable that feature by clicking the required AVS checking checkbox here on the configuration screen. For credit cards entered onto the tab in the Business Partner Master Data section associated with business partners, there is an exclude from AVS checking option to enable on a card by card basis exclusion from this configuration setting. I mentioned previously that credit memo levels are always enabled in the credit card processing application. However, Without checking the process credits not linked to an invoice checkbox here on the configuration screen, you'll only be able to process linked credit memos, which are referencing an originating transaction. However, please note that simply checking this box may not be enough to enable this feature, as you may need to check with your credit card processor to have settings done to your account to enable this on their end. For example, Authorized.NET accounts have to be set up on Authorized.NET's end in order to successfully process unlinked credits. If you've set up consolidating business partners in your SAP Business One system and would like any incoming payments created to be associated with the consolidated business partner rather than the end business partner, simply click the configuration here, Create Incoming Payment for Consolidated BP. 
In order for the credit card processing application to identify which documents should be prompted for authorization, you'll need to designate a payment terms code from SAP as the payment terms code to be used by the application. This can be either one of the default payment terms codes like 2P10NET30 or NET30, or you can create your own custom payment terms code such as credit card and select the code in the field provided. If you'll be utilizing the third wave credit card application to settle authorizations imported into SAP from an outside source, the import data key field is where you'll need to place the data encryption key of the outside program. Please note that the following criteria are required for utilizing these external application imports. One, the external application must use the same Rigendell data encryption method that credit card processing uses. Two, the external application must expose its data encryption key to the user so that value can be put onto the import data key field. And three, the imported data into SAP must flow through SAP's data interface. When the application is initially installed, the default data encryption key value is automatically entered into the system. It's visible to the user here as stars. The key administrator designated for each credit card customer should be responsible for the administration and changes of the keys. Please refer to our PADSS implementation guide for more information. The processor tab of the credit card configuration screen is where you will select your credit card processor. At this time, only one processor can be designated per SAP company database. Once you've selected your processor, you'll be able to select your transaction mode. Please note that Third Wave highly recommends that before installing the credit card application or applying any updates to a live production environment, the application or updates should be tested by the end customer in a testing environment. Once you've selected your processor in transaction mode, you can enter your processor's account credentials and specify the reauthorization threshold. This is a value in days that you can obtain from your merchant bank designating the period of time that an authorization will be considered valid before it expires. If the credit card processing application supports level 2 or level 3 data integration for your selected processor, checkboxes will be visible below the reauthorization threshold field. Please note that if your processor supports both level 2 and level 3 data integration and you want to utilize level 3 data integration, level 2 data integration will be automatically selected and cannot be disabled. Once you've set all your credit card configurations, simply click the Update button at the bottom left corner of the configuration screen. Once the configurations have been saved to the database, you'll notice that your login credentials look different because the values have been encrypted with the data encryption key and you're now viewing the encrypted strings. To close the configuration screen, simply click the OK button in the bottom left corner of the form. Now you're installed configured, and ready to start using Third Wave's credit card processing add-on for SAP Business One. Before we finish, I'd just like to take a moment to point out some important documentation that accompanies the application. In the documentation folder of our download package, you'll find the application release notes, which lists new features for major releases and identifies issues addressed in patches. You'll also find the credit card user guide, as well as our PADSS implementation guide, which contains critical information on steps that must be followed for end customers to be sure that they are satisfying all of the requirements to maintain their PCI compliance with their use of our credit card application. The user guide is also accessible from the Help, Documentation, TWBS add-ons, credit card processing menu within SAP Business One. This will launch the WinCHM User Guide, which provides extensive information on new features, custom screens and tabs created in the SAP User Interface, and detailed how-to pages instructing you step-by-step -step how to perform actions in the application. For more information on Third Wave's credit card processing or any of the other applications that Third Wave offers, please visit our website at www.twbs.com. You can click the Contact Us link in the upper right corner of the page. Existing Third Wave partners and customers can obtain more information through the support portal by clicking the Customer Support link in the upper right corner of the page. Thank you for your time and attention.